Welcome, everyone, to episode two of the Simple Gear podcast, the only podcast on YouTube where we talk about Simple Gear, unless there's one I don't know about, which is entirely possible. Anyway, tonight I am joined by the great and wonderful Sea Tactics, who is known for the fact that last year he finished fourth place in the governor's race for Maryland. Welcome to the show, Sea Tactics. Well, uh, the reason I lost is because they said you can't have an accent. And I thought to myself, everybody has an accent. Why can't I have an accent? And then they spoke in a robotic tone. Turns out they're just robots. Yes, apparently you can have an accent if you want the robot overlords to vote for you. But speaking of robot overlords, we have a wonderful episode of Simpho Gear. I don't know how that fits at all. Just go with it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. This episode of Simpho Gear is really good. Actually, this is one of my favorite episodes in the whole series. Yeah, I I think I agree with you, but it's kind of hard to judge Sinfo Gear, but this episode was definitely very Sinfo Gear, so I approve. It's still, like, it had everything that made, makes Sinfo Gear good. Yeah, it, it's like... Like, it, it wasn't perfect. It was still rough around the edges, and I'm sure we'll talk about that. It felt a little disjointed. It felt like we were watching three different segments. Uh, but... Yeah. Like, this episode is a great example of why I like Sinfo Gear, though, just it had pieces of everything in it. Yeah, it was self-aware, it was serious, dramatic, had violence. <laughs> yeah, it, and had, like, three new songs, which are all great. It had lollies dancing on poles. <laughs> yes, and dancing in the middle of fight, kind of, while they sing and destroy noise. Technically, it was Ursai. But it, <laughs> yeah. It, but that... But I, I think the scythe transformed into the scythe after it was a pole. Yeah, it was like a pole at first, and then it turned into a scythe, and then she wrote it, so. Uh, Gear episode 2, The Day the Sky Falls, which I think is more of like a, a threat. Because it's like, it hasn't happened yet. They're just they're like, the day the sky falls. I think it's also metaphorical, because I don't know if you can literally have the sky fall, but then again, the Gear. I mean, the atmosphere can fall and go away. And, you know. All right, we should just we should destroy the atmosphere then. Subasa and Mario hold a concert, but when the noise attacks, they start killing the audience members, like in episode one of Symphogear. Gear. But Mario and Subasa counter, and a new succubus-looking lolly shows up and kills a kills a bunch of people, and also kills a girl right in front of Subasa's face by putting her arm through her chest and blood going everywhere. And then Subasa screams. It's actually pretty horrific. Afterwards, they analyze the mummy thing, who's definitely going to turn into a hot girl. I don't care if it turns into dust. It's going to turn into a hot girl, but the corpse then turns to dust. Oh, but the only thing that remains is the gold bracelet, to which someone's going to put it on, or they're going to, like, touch it, and the hot girl is going to, like, manifest, and then we're going to get another hot girl. I thought of something related to that. What if, like, Hibiki's thing in the opening is after she gets the power from that uh, bracelet thing? Because, like, it's golden and Hibiki's killer is yellow, so it kind of makes sense. And he, well, Hibiki already went Super Saiyajin, but now she's going to yeah. go Super Saiyajin 2. Exactly. exactly. It's just a Super Saiyan, but different, because that's how Simple Gear works. Oh, no. She's going to go Super Saiyan 4, and she's going to turn into, like, an ape. Well, I mean, uh, can we... First of all, I don't know if you noticed this, actually, in this episode, but uh, there was a, an alchemist lolly... And they showed her butt, like, and it was covered in fur. Oh, yes, that. Yeah, I was kind of confused by that. And she wasn't human. <laughs> she was part animal. So this is a lolly uh, furry alchemist lolly. I thought for a moment, I thought for, like she was a goat for a moment, but I think she's a rabbit. I wonder if the other uh, our new lolly is also an animal. Oh, yeah. Well, the new she's like a, she kind of looks like a bat. Yeah, because well, it's like yeah, that's true. And then she had the power to like transform her arm into the thing that blocks the boss's sword. So yeah, maybe they're both like animal lollies. That makes sense. Goddamn, goddamn lollies. You know what? I used to think like, oh man, these death lollies were bad. But this episode kind of made me like the death lolly and the chainsaw lolly. Yeah, the well, I call it together. I call them the murder lollies, and they were both pretty cool. And I, well, one of the things at the start of the episode was just how they were indicating like Adam wanted to destroy this coffin. So it's like the Simpho Gears kind of did what the main villain of last season was trying to do all along. So 
and it just feels like they're building up to this being the final season by drawing so much from from the previous seasons. Yeah, uh, it does feel like like we're. I mean, in, even in the opening, it does that. It shows like all of the basically it references all the past seasons. This season just feels like an epic send off for like the fans. Well, yeah, and I think part of the reason they did it is like from when they made season four, they knew that season five would be the last because they announced them like right after each other. Mm-hmm. And I mean, in, in the very beginning of this episode as well, you had the whole Chris thing, where she's she has the gloves and the very and she looks at the photo that was taken at the end of last season, which is oh yeah, I forgot about the gloves. Yeah, and then i I like this part actually i wish we got this much earlier we kind of got it some in season one and then ever since then chris's kind of personal life has kind of just been not there (laughs) she's kind of been yeah it's like she's just been there to fire missiles and stuff yeah massive boobs uh (laughs) yeah but but i i like this part because uh it's some basic sundere trope stuff but it really fits her character that you know she's she's wearing these gloves and Hibiki starts teasing Chris about it because Chris is you know so tough and and Chris always hits Hibiki with the bag which which she does after Hibiki uh, teases Chris she's she just has enough of it but uh, yeah. Chris is good yeah yeah I like Chris she's probably my favorite character besides Maria because Maria isn't a fifteen year old <laughs> yeah she's like a twenty two year old or something she's like thirty eight. I don't think she's that old. She's 42, something like that. Okay, I'll have to look up to the wiki later. She wore cool aviators that one time. Yeah, and then she was dressed up in, like, a suit and glasses like she's part of the FBI this episode, which is kind of weird. Oh, yeah, she had, she, yeah. Yeah, yeah and I was like... Well, there, there was this, there, in season four, they were all dressed up as park rangers, so... Well, I thought that was, like, a uniform for being part of song. They got some weird-ass uniforms. That looks like Park Rangers. <laughs> they do. And they probably just get the character designs. Okay, come up with crazy uniforms. We're going to make them wear them. <laughs> and then someone's like, hey, can I draw uh, Mario? And as soon as like, sure, why not? Go for it. <laughs> yeah, Mario, show has... Mario seems to always be the cool one, though. Like, she always just has, like, charisma and swagger. Yeah, she does. Yeah, well, the sunglasses is, like, right on screen now. I was like, okay, why did... Why is this scene right now? Not like I'm complaining, but it's weird. Um, so, uh, they, well, speaking of Maria and Subasa, they have a performance in this episode, which leads into the, the, the last part. But before yeah. we get into that part, we'll talk about that part last. Oh, well, yeah, because they had the scene before when, like, Subasa was practicing and uh, Maria was with her. Yeah, and... and- I actually almost forgot that they were idols before everything else happened. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. I think it's interesting, though, it's like how uh, they're saying like Subasa's place to fight is also on stage because she can like inspire people with her music and everything there. Right, and she's also had the opening song for every single season, which is another thing. I, I think it's actually, oh. I think it's been the opening for every season has been Tsubasa's, uh voice actress and then the ending has always been chris's voice actress okay i didn't catch that you'll have to go check that because yeah now that i think about it that like last season that was definitely subasa so which by the way i think we got this is the first time we got the new opening this episode yeah that was the new one i think it's the best one yeah i like the, the music and i like how they're just showing like all the characters where they came from and now they're coming together for this final battle with, against the illuminati I think in general, this is like the best music Symphogear Gears ever had. Yeah, it, uh, every song so far I've loved. So, and most of the songs I like, but I don't think they've all been at this level. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> this this whole season really just this whole season it just feels like everything is just the best quality it's ever been. Yeah, they've like had five seasons to refine exactly what they want to do for the animation, the music, the story. What exactly Simple Gear wants to be? They've learned that, so they can pull that all off uh, right here. It's kind of sad though that it has to end. On this yeah, it, it is, but I kind of feel like they can't keep like making more of it. Though they yeah. based it, though it's like every season so far they could have ended it there, except for last season. If they could do it, I would love it 
if they actually made like just movies every now and again. Oh, that would be cool. Because they could like really make incredible animation with that, and they could do like more off and on making it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so they 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 uh Mario and Tsubasa do their performance, and this has got to be the best looking performance. And usually, like besides season one, I'd say when they perform, and it's like what once a season maybe. It's it's rarely it happens. They typically always look good because that's the only one you're going to get. So it's typically one of the better looking scenes you'll see in a Symphogear season. But this one was astonish- astonishingly just fantastic. I mean, the choreography, the camera work. Yeah, like all the lighting. And th- I'd say this uh, scene was probably one of the best uh, musical performances I've seen in all of anime. I don't, I don't know. I haven't thought about that. I probably haven't seen much to say on that front. You've probably seen more yeah. than me, but... Oh, I'm thinking, like, Bang Dream. It's like the performances weren't all that special in that one, though they were also realistic, well, Simpho Gear, Simpho Gear, so... I'll say this. This blows K-On! and Love Live out of the water. Yep, I will agree with you there. Like, it, it, it's, it's, it is night and day compared to those, and one of those is Kyoto Animation. So, I... I this... I if there is one thing you should take away from this 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 episode it's this this part where they perform because it just looks it looked incredible it, it, one of the best looking things in this season and I know like that's you know that's rich coming from a Sinfo Gear fan but mm-hmm. I really like I can't think of too much else that looks as good as this scene did. Yeah, and like Simple Gear has great animation, and they really went all out. I mean, they didn't have to like worry about the battle and all that. They just able to like sell it. Here's two characters performing a song, putting everything together to make it great. Mm-hmm. Uh, Catherine asks, "What do you think will happen to Miku this season?" Do you? Think, uh, I, I assume they accidentally typed that out. Didn't finish typing, but. Uh, my my theory I made a video on this on my main channel but my main theory is that uh, that Miku is going to originally I thought they were going to fight Miku again but oh. I thought about it I, I think Miku is going to help Hibiki uh, yeah, my, fight the, my theory, the death lollies yeah my theory is that uh, Miku is going to uh, destroy the moon and then Hibiki will put it back together and then they will happily ever after and then afterwards hibiki and uh, miku will go to hawaii <laughs> no this is what's gonna happen hibiki's gonna be like i want to eat the moon miku's like you can't do that sweetie <laughs> well the opening makes it look like hibiki's gonna punch the moon so maybe he helps with that man if if that if she punches the moon i swear i will get up and yell out loud just a uh, just screaming any i don't even know just screaming it's the this is the best show ever because i have I mean, what other shows do they do you have them punching out the moon not only that but teasing it for five seasons well yes yeah, the opening it looks like she's going after the moon so she's going to be punching it it's god this show, it's rough around the edges a lot of times because it's just it's just the way it's written. It's it's like it's a, it's a it's written like a B list action movie, but like a really good one. Right. So, and it's like it doesn't care about being a perfect story. It's like let's have fun. This is the story we're going with. Let's make it awesome. Exactly. This it, it feel, this is the way. <laughs> this this is the way Michael Bay's Transformer should be. It should be one hundred percent self aware and. Yeah, it may not have the best writing uh, ever, but it's for the people who like it. And yeah, it may not have the best writing, but guess what? Every single, every other thing is like really good. Yeah, it's like, did that ha- actually happen? That's awesome. Yeah, that's why my uh, crazy fan theory is that Michael will be secretly the info. Yeah. Um, but because I, like, if he, if he made an anime, it would be Simpho Gear. I... It, or may, well, I mean, Transformers was based off of anime, right? So, I mean, it was okay. We'll go along with that. You, you could probably just make an anime Transformers. And it'll, be just a, it'll probably be one of the better Transformer animated series if you did. 
Yeah, well, back to the actual episode when we had the uh, noise were attacking the carrier where they had the, uh, whatever that thing was, the coffin. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and when you had uh, the two lollies jumping off the helicopter, and apparently the death lolly forgot her linker, and then so uh, uh, the chancel... Yeah, so the chancel lolly gave it to her as they were falling, and I was like, you should probably check to make sure you have that before you jump from a helicopter without a parachute. This is the weirdest thing. <laughs> yeah, like they were, they were like hugging, and then they transformed, and it's like we got a really cool transformation sequence. <laughs> they almost kissed. <laughs> I don't know if that was quite a kiss, but a hug, so sure, let's go with that. Some people will be happy now. They, they are definitely, that was like, that was like nodding to the fans who want those two to, to kiss. For sure. Just like they do it for every other couple. Exactly. In this anime. They're, they're like the unofficial couple. Uh, in, well, we also, during the... During the battle too, they like had a dan- they were like dancing together during it. It was like, okay, why not? Let's go with it. This yeah. is perfect. It, the lyrics in it were were hilarious. I can't remember any of them. Um, oh, yeah, I didn't write down any of hers. I wrote down it for the uh, other lolly. Oh, I, yeah, for uh, Sh- Shirabe says I did extra homework on how to slaughter you. <laughs> yes, I actually wrote that line down. I was like, this is perfect. That's going in the notes. Before that. Uh, Sh- Shirabe, Shirab- Shirabe jumps jumps down a gaping hole in the ship. <laughs> or no, Kiri, Kiri, Kiri does, yeah, Kiri, and Sh- Kiri. Shirabe says, Kiri-chan, act sane for once. And she, well, no, says, and she yells death on the way down. Well, yeah, she's yelled death first, and then uh, Shirabe was saying, hey, act sane for once, please. <laughs> and then uh, uh, Kirika got her uh, side stuck on the inside of the ship, which I just thought that was hilarious. It's like, you have a giant weapon. Those aren't always practical. <laughs> but it doesn't work anyways, because they're, they're the death lollies. Yeah, and then she can make it her size smaller at, because this is simple gear. <laughs> and, uh, and they uh, they think they defeat the, 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 the rabbit girl. And she comes, yeah. and, and they go, and they go, we did it. And then the girl gets up from the rubble and says, you didn't do it. <laughs> yes, I for, almost forgot about that part, but just the back and forth during that battle was great. It's like, in, uh, the enemy was saying, like, I was holding back, but it's, yeah, I don't know. Oh, I love it. I just love yeah. that part where they're like, we did it. And she's like, you didn't do it. It's so self-aware. <laughs> this show knows it's Symphogear, gear. And that's the best part. Yeah, it's like, this show is not trying to be Evangelion. It's trying to be Sympho Gear. It'd be cool if it was trying to be Evangelion, though. I mean... Maybe it will be by the end. You never know. That's a Sympho Gear thing you do. It's like, you're like, okay, we're now even... Pilot uh, get in the... again. Exactly. Don't they have, Evangelion. like... Oh, maybe Amiga gets an Evangelion and she fights along with the Sympho Gears. <laughs> it'd be, it would be the best. And uh, the director guy is uh, uh, the the director, <laughs> Big Alien. He's the guy. Who, uh, he's Shinji's father. What's his name? God. Uh, Gendo. Yeah, Gendo Ikari. He's the director is Gendo Ikari. <laughs> I feel like the director is going to turn into Kamina by the end, just like punch things. <laughs> oh my god. Who? Okay. Who would Subasa be? Chris Chan would be uh, Asuka. Because they're both Sundares. Right. So, uh, Subasa would be... Uh, she'd be uh, Kenshin from Rurouni Kenshin. <laughs> it's not even the same anime! <laughs> you never said it had to be the same anime. I mean, you're right. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so... So, yeah, we got two new songs for the lollies during that battle, which, those were both really cool, and I enjoyed them uh, doing extra homework. Uh, slaughter people, and then the death lolly talking about death like she does. Mm-hmm. We also figured out that the thick girl from who rides the the car or drives the car uh, in the last episode is commanding the animal lollies. Yeah, we kind of got that impression last episode, but it's more confirmed, and they also have some sort of like telepathic link. Mm-hmm. They, it's I think it's the same thing they used in season four with the other alchemist. Yeah, that could be. Because they, they so have I guess the that's same just... little capsule things that or the. the, the, the Crystal things they use to teleport. Yeah, I was gonna say they had the same teleporting power as the other alchemists. Yeah, and they—I mean—they called them an alchemist too. So. 
They are yeah. Right up after um, uh, there's this part the... where uh, Subasa and Maria are talking, and this is the part where they agree to sing uh, on stage, and uh, uh -huh. Maria flicks Subasa's head. <laughs> Well, something else I thought was interesting was Maria saying she wanted to sing all night with Subasa, and my question is, does that mean oh, something else? Yes, you, and she blushed, so 100%, those are some well, eerie undertones, my friend. I can think of like three ways you could take that comment. I'm sure they would be okay with the three-way as well. <laughs> Alright, that wasn't intentional, but well, whatever, this is a simple good podcast. Does Chris have a pairing in this? Uh, she has her giant missiles. <laughs> I mean that's good enough for me. I'm okay with that. Hey, if we could do if hey hey if we could do Yuki X C tactics, we should do Yuki. We should do Yuki or uh, Chris X C tactics. No, that was not as good. Oh god damn it! Wait, isn't Chris's uh, last name Yuki? Or what was uh, it? Yuki Nay. Yeah. Okay, so it's now the Yuki X C tactics pairing. All right, uh, so you get all the character name characters named Yuki. I'm okay. I mean, I'll sacrifice. Like, I, you know what? If I got to give up Yuki for Chris, I'm okay with that. Like, I'll take no, for the team. You just get all characters named Yuki. So Yuki and Ace count, so you get them both. So, what other characters that are Yuki? I don't know. In the chat, tell us what other characters are Yuki that Sutak gets, whether he wants them or not. <laughs> I want to create an army of Yuki's. <laughs> um, oh, then that... So, yeah, after that, we a good performance, which we already talked about that some. Well, actually, before that, they're, uh, the rest of the characters are in a car driving, and the Hibiki is like, geez, where, where's Chris at? And Chris rolls up immediately and says, geez, what do you want? There was a traffic jam. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. And then they're also... Like, Maria saying she couldn't make it, and I was thinking, oh, is she going to be on the concert? But, yep, yep, she is. That makes sense. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, got the amazing choreography. Uh, the, the, the noise start to attack. Of course, which I found to be kind of predictable, and I think I, I would like to think... I, in a way, I wish they wouldn't just to, like, end on the concert on that note. But, again, they're trying to tie back into season one, right. so it kind of fits. Exactly. So, like... Like, Tsubasa failed to protect everyone then, and now again, she still failed even after all this time. Right. This was a ch her chance for redemption. And this is another another freaking nod to season one again, and I love it. This show's amazing. It, it knows what its fans want, and that is, like, a f story that goes full circle and just ends it on a climactic note. And this episode had one of the most... I would say shocking scenes in all of Symfo Gear for the fact that this has never happened before. I mean, we've got like children getting their legs cut off, but we've right. never had this this bat demon lolly girl show up and impale her arm into a girl's chest right in front of Sabasa. Yeah, and like all the blood with it too, which is not like Symfo Gear. Yeah, well, they, they they like blood. I mean, the first episode. Hibiki gets hit by a piece of a Symfo gear and blood spews out of her chest. Yeah, well, it's rare that they have that much blood, though. It's like, they, they'll kill people, but typically the noise just disintegrates them, but that one, they really, like, this is violent, this is brutal. What got to me, what made it shocking is the blood that covered Tsubasa and how Tsubasa reacted. Yes, and how, like, that set Tsubasa off so much, me making her go crazy. And she called the character a bitch, which is another which... one. Which, they, they've used cursed curse words every now and again but this here i mean this whole scene was was i'm pretty sure the people who directed this and wrote it and produced it were like we're just gonna make like the most shocking scene because they kind of had to in a way because they're once yeah. again harkening back to season one and they're trying to make a point of this is the part where subasa failed to protect people so they have to make it as brutal as they can and we also see the the actually the first thing we see is we see a girl get sliced in half by uh, by the noise. Right, and that was, didn't that happen in season one? I think I think a I think a bunch of people got sliced in half. <laughs> yeah, once. probably. But they showed it up close, and you could see the the person's facial reaction when she got chopped in half. 
Oh, and something else about that scene that was interesting is that there was not a song, there was not a lyrical song playing. Which, Wait. yeah, that's very like there. There was not. They were not singing during that fight. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah, because I that was really weird, and like, why aren't they? Is it just like symbolizing something? Do they just not want to put the song here? Maybe. I'm not sure. You yeah, well, we found, be yeah, we found, be like, maybe that makes him weaker, or maybe they have, like, a when she was underwater, but still, that's why is that needed? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm not sure. If, if it happens in more episodes, I think we may start to figure out why that is. Yeah, like, they were, like, so desperate that you weren't able to, like, get in the musical mood or whatever. <laughs> the musical mood. <laughs> Or Yuri undertones. <laughs> they're gonna refer to their train like they're gonna they're, they're just gonna say, "Get the musical mood, everybody." <laughs> and gonna yes, and, and then this will turn into a yaoi by the end. No, oh, no, it's gotta be Yuri. They all gotta kiss, or they'll have like a six-way performance. One of these damn characters has to kiss by the end. One of them has to um, kiss another. By the end of this, we need at least one pairing. It'll be the commander and the ninja. <laughs> I love the fact he's a ninja. <laughs> I don't know his name or any other good way to describe him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he literally does the Naruto thing where he turns into a log. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the commander to fight, too. Like, actually fight the noise. Because I feel like he has, like, he can do something awesome if they let him. Right, yeah, yeah. He's he's an awesome character. I definitely right. would love to see more more from him. Uh, but yeah, so at the end, Tsubasa basically curses herself for not being able to save someone yet again. Thankfully, well, this time it wasn't Maria. I was worried that they were going to kill Maria, and I was like, "You sons!" Oh, of that! I don't know if they'll kill off if they could kill off a main character like that, but that would definitely be a shock. So maybe the final season they might. They can't do this. They can't do this well, to Maria. And specifically, during that battle, the villains were going after Tsubasa, and that they uh, that way they wanted to make her angry, and then they did some kind of type of spell. It's like the, a seal of something. Oh, yeah, it was like seal invasion or something like that. Yeah, and so I feel like they were trying to like trigger her, get her emotions really high, and then put whatever that was on her. Like, what does that do? Like, why are they going after her in that way? Yeah. I do wonder as well because they made it a distinct, like they distinct. They even like gave it its own like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure looking color coded thing. Like it was like a whole. It was a whole ordeal. Are they gonna have more JoJo references this season? I mean, did you see it the after the end credits when they showed the mummy thing and they did the freeze frame on the mummy? Or no, that was the beginning of the anime. Well, that yeah, exactly the end of it. Like the... JoJo. Huh. When they do like the first okay. frame. Okay, yeah, I haven't seen JoJo for a while, so. Um, Catherine says Miku and Hibiki need to kiss this season. If that's the main one that really needs to do it, that's one that would make most sense. But, I but think this is info gear. The second one that would make most sense besides Miku and Hibiki is Maria and Tsubasa. Yeah, that would. I there's definitely some eerie undertones there. Also, and then you have the little the lollies, of course, oh, but yeah. she doesn't count those. Yeah, those those aren't people. Lollies aren't people. Uh, <laughs> Chris right, could just you know, like just... kiss a rocket or, or like a missile or a gun or something. Wait, wasn't there the one uh, quote last season where they were saying... <laughs> and she was like knocked out and almost. They, I mean, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, she loves the plans that she's fighting to protect. Chris fights to protect the smile of of her missiles and nothing else. Exactly. She wants her missiles to she she wants to protect that innocent smile those missiles have. I don't know if missiles can have an innocent smile, but for Chris they do. Dude, you know Chris better blow something up. Like a whole fucking city. She better level a goddamn city like in Trigun. Maybe she blows up the moon. There you go. 
Well, no, Hibiki's got to punch the moon. Maybe they team up, like Chris blows it up, and then Hibiki punches it to destroy it. I don't know. I feel, I f maybe they should try to blow up the moon together, and it fails. And then Hibiki's like, I got to do it one last. I got to sacrifice myself. Miku, I love you. Get, gives a smooch on uh, Miku. There we go. Get the smooch. And then... We get, you know, the big the big dragon fist thing like Goku does, but Super Saiyajin 2, Hibiki. No, what I was thinking, what I was thinking is that the Chris tries blowing it up, or they team up and fail, and Miku, like, encouraging Hibiki, saying, you can do it, try again. She kisses her, and then Hibiki punches the moon and then destroys Mars in the process. Poor Mars. Yeah, we, it, it did not deserve that fate. <laughs> or Hibiki just misses and accidentally hits Mars. Or maybe, like, she has to punch Mars back into existence. Okay, maybe that's the final scene. Because <laughs> I'm thinking about it. If you blow up Mars, or if you blow up uh, or the moon, that ain't, that ain't going to be good. Yeah, that would be bad for, like, the Earth and the gravity and tidal waves and all that. I mean, Dragon Ball Z did it, and they still haven't added the moon back. Yeah, that might be an issue. I, I did look up a while back if blowing up the moon would be illegal or not. Technically not, because nothing in space can be owned. All right, I'll be back then. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Catherine says nothing is innocent about riding missiles. Is it, there's a song by Guns N' Roses called Rocket Queen. I'll just there say is? that. Because you have the rocket and you have the, 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 the queen's crown. You know what I'm saying? All right, so that'll be Chris's song this season. Rocket Queen by Guns N' Roses. <laughs> exactly. In the middle of that song. So there's a story about this song, actually. I'll be quick. Okay. Axl Rose, that they needed something for the middle of the song where there's no vocals or anything. It's like a, like, uh, it's like a, a very calm part in the song. And so Axl said to the producer of the album, uh, turn down the lights... I'm gonna bang your girlfriend. Just record it. Okay. And he, they did, and he's like, "All right, I guess I'm doing this." It's Axl Rose. He's, and so he, his his girlfriend, he basically got cucked. <laughs> and it, the evidence is on the album. Huh. Okay then. Yeah. Good. So, uh, simple gear. Overall thoughts on the episode, or anything that we uh, missed? Second or third best episode. Yep, uh, I say best episode of the season so far. Though the first episode was also great. The first episode was pretty good. Not, I don't think anywhere near the level of this episode. But uh, yeah, yeah, this... yeah. This one they have just like everything firing as it should for simple gear. I think if you take out Vinland Saga. And maybe Carol and Tuesday, because I think Carol and Tuesday is just a, be a well, a way better put together anime, and it kind of fills the same kind of fan base. Um, okay. Uh, I think this episode is currently the best episode of the season that I've personally seen. I would say so too, though I have not seen as many shows as you. So I, did, I haven't seen the good ones yet. I did watch Okasa on online today. Huh? <laughs> No, I'm not watching that one. I did. It's a really bad show. <laughs> I have like four shows this season I'm watching, and most of these aren't. Most of them are not close close to Symphogear. Gear. Yeah, I would I would say this season of Symphogear, Gear so far, I think I, I've been thinking about this. It's not just a good season of Symphogear. Gear. I think not only is it the best season of Symphogear, Gear, I think it's now finally like an anime that I think you could safely recommend to pretty much anyone. I think it's it's almost into the, like, it's not not like a great anime, but you know what I mean? Where, like, it's got enough, like, you could recommend it safely to anyone because it's, like, right below great. Does that make sense? I pretty much, I feel like it's the type of show for fans of shows like this. Like, if you want an absurd action show, I can easily recommend Sympho Gear to you. If you want something more normal, maybe not, but there's still some appeal to it. I think this is like, okay, let me put in like a ratings. Uh, like a 7.5 and 8 out of 10. Yeah, I'd say that's probably around where, where I have it. Whereas, like... I would put 
every single season of Sinfo Gear before this around a seven. Yeah, I think that's what I have on Mal. Is like some of them start off seven, enjoyable all throughout. They're not quite great. Like I think every season is good. I think se- season one is the weakest. Season two is probably one of the more forgettable seasons. Just like the only thing that came out of that is Maria and the death lollies, uh, or the murder lollies or whatever we call them. Season three is pretty good, uh, and then season four is really damn good, and I think season five is pretty great. Yeah, I would agree with you. All right, so everyone go watch Sinfo Gear. Granted, if you have not already seen Sinfo Gear, probably not watching this podcast, but... <laughs> uh, Catherine says Grand Belm is, uh, is pretty good. I need to do watch another episode before I have a full opinion on that one. Yeah, you should do a video on it. Maybe, maybe people on this channel want you to talk about it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe maybe I said that I was going to talk about it on my channel with Garfield, but then I kind of didn't like the anime. Enough to cover I, yeah, I I was not over... Well, episode 1 had some parts I liked, but yeah, I'll save those thoughts for another video, possibly on my anime Amina, which you should go check out. Also, uh, the person who voices Maria, uh, Yoko Hikasa, voices uh the one of the characters in grand belm the girl the the, the is it, she's she's like the reddish pinkish haired girl she kind of looks like uh elsa from me zero oh moe elsa oh yes moe elsa who could forget <laughs> i have nothing else to say yeah i think we're uh, done with this episode so thank you everyone for watching uh, we will be back next week to talk about episode three of Simple Gear. Uh, C Tactics, where can they find you? They can find me on my main channel called C Tactics, and uh, I cover lots of stuff there. I have a monthly series called OV Awful. I'm putting really a lot of stock into that recently. Um, really, this season I'm gonna take it easy, but I'm gonna I'm gonna have a lot of I don't know. Fun videos every now and again. Um, recently put out a video on Evangelion. Two videos. One of them got was really popular, but another one is about Shinji Ikari. Uh, if you like yeah, that kind of thing. You should also check out my video about Evangelion where I say that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that too. That's, that's a good video. I like that video. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you give me a dumb idea and I have some time back. To... <laughs> uh, oh, God. What else? Um, I have weekly King of Anime podcast, which... Mm-hmm airs every saturday live on the bento channel my bento channel is the second is my second channel though if you don't want to watch it live you can actually catch it on a vod because i upload it to the main channel it's a main channel series but it streams live on the youtube channel for bento and twitch.tv forward slash c tactics which is the main place that i actually promote that show so it's it's really a twitch show um yeah, i occasionally watch like two minutes of it say hi and then i leave <laughs> Uh, we also cover Fruits Basket on the Bento channel every single Friday. Uh, we, we, Fruits we, Basket is very Friday. different than Simpho Gear. Yes, but both are good. <laughs> They're but they actually yeah, Fruits Basket is airing now, so it is my favorites of the season. Um, also have like every Monday since uh, YouTube changed their copyright stuff, I can actually do manga stuff again, and I'm officially moving all my manga reviews over to. Uh, the Bento channel. So every Monday you're going to get uh, a manga review of some form. For now, it's just going to be re-uploads, but I'm going to take that time to build up a, a bunch of newer manga reviews. So I plan also to do manhwa stuff, like The Girl from Random Chatting, uh, I Love You, Unordinary. Also stuff like Blade of the Immortal. I'm going to do something there. Uh, I've heard a rumor that you're going to be covering the fake lead manga. Well, I'm going to be probably covering the OVA, so... <laughs> oh, yes. When are you going to watch that one? I talk too much about this stuff. I need to have, like, a bullet point so I can get through this quick. But anyways, it doesn't matter. You all know me. I don't care. It doesn't matter yep, if yeah. you watch or not. Go for, I'll also join the Discord, which is down below, because I don't have a Discord because I don't want one, but I am hanging out in C's and will post uh, funny screenshots when I find them. Yeah! Oh, and Catherine, if you like Grand Bell, me and Garfield had a ReZero podcast... We did for like a year and a half, pretty much straight. We're still doing it. Just got to find the time to continue doing it. So, uh, yes, ReZero is a show that I we need to read more of. Yes. 
I didn't know you were going to Oh, you, you don't need to worry about that. <laughs> or maybe, maybe Garfield is you. Yes, maybe you got Garfield and I swap out every podcast. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Uh, yes, I will let you do your outro. Oh, I'm supposed to do an outro? Okay, this is my channel. You can go follow me here. Uh, check out my Twitter where I post things, and it's probably the best way to know what all I'm doing. Uh, you can also follow me on Anime Amina, where I post uh, stories which are like short videos, and I don't know how much longer I'm going to be doing that. But if you like those videos, let me know, and I will keep doing it. Uh, yes, thank you for watching. Uh, we'll see you next Sunday or Monday or whenever we have time to watch and record and do fun things. And Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and uh, yeah, I don't know anything else. Goodbye. Bye.